Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 68 On the verge, too. Qi Yunruo finally stepped aside from the main doors. Yet, as the soldiers rushed in, he caught sight of the content smile on Su Yuan's face and suddenly thought, something's wrong. Could there really be something in His Highness' estate? For this half year, Qi Yunruo and the prince had been inseparable. Naturally, he knew the prince hadn't contacted enemies of the country. This was a false charge. However, since there was already a traitor in the estate, why couldn't there be things in the estate that shouldn't be there? As Su Yuan dismounted his horse to enter the estate, Qi Yunruo retreated a step. Then he instructed the estate guards, don't let anyone near Winter Plum Courtyard. Tell the womenfolk they must make for Winter Plum Courtyard, and the young masters and young misses as well. Understood. Qi Yunruo moved to the side, allowing the soldiers to enter. He shot a cold glance at Li Zaihoki. Even he wouldn't have the qualifications to enter His Highness' personal study. There shouldn't be anything there. Qi Yunruo calmly followed after Su Yuan. Excited, Su Yuan commanded his men to check the front courtyard. Deputy General Su, it's fine to exercise your authority to complete your duties, said Qi Yunruo. But don't forget this is the estate of a first-ranked prince. This isn't a place where your men can behave atrociously. Snorting coldly, Su Yuan said, Do you actually think that after today, Prince Chun's estate would remain how it was in the past, able to rampage at will in the capital? Before Qi Yunruo could retort how did Prince Chun's estate go on a rampage, he felt deep in unease. Just what was wrong? Why did Su Yuan seem so convinced that he would find something here? The inner study. It was the inner study. All of a sudden, he shouted, Stern, Fang Gur, gather all the guards in front of His Highness' inner study. In Martial Hero Hall, no one spoke. They waited for Su Yuan to bring back some evidence of Prince Chun's crimes. Prince Yang lowered his head, silent. The letter he prepared had been written by Cheng Sija personally. Cheng Sija was meticulous, stamping his seal on the letter's cover. Furthermore, his tone made it seem very likely that he and Prince Chun had a close connection. As long as Su Yuan brought back those pieces of evidence, even if there was no way to convict Prince Chun, it was enough to stain his reputation forever. And he would never be able to become the crown prince. Li Chen frowned inwardly. If they truly stabbed him in the back on purpose, even if he wanted to be washed clean of this dirty water, he'd have to use much effort. Right now, Mr. Yang was still in Jiangnan. Among those in the prince estate, Chao Manjin wasn't too capable. There was only Little Chi himself. Would Little Chi be able to handle those people? Su so Yuan said, Sir Chi, if you truly wish to resist an imperial decree, then don't blame this general's sword for being ruthless. Chi Yunruo had led people to block the inner study's entrance. The inner study is a place where His Highness stores important documents. Without his approval, no one can enter. There had always been guards guarding the inner study. Qi Yunruo had been inside before, and knew that there were many letters between the prince and his trusted aides there. Furthermore, official business from the Yaman that was confidential. At this moment, no matter if such information could not be spread, these evil people would still spread it and dress it up in a bad light. Not only that, Qi Yunruo sensed that Su Yuan and his men were certain of something being in the prince's inner study, something that must be kept secret. Su Yuan drew his saber, taking one step after the other toward Qi Yunruo. This general has come here under the orders of His Majesty. If you dare to obstruct me, Prince Chun can't do anything even if this general kills you. Sir. Sir Chi, Su Ji rushed over. Blurted, Her Highness the Princess Consort is in critical condition. She has already fainted twice. Dr. Wu still hasn't been found. Before Su Ji could respond, one of the soldiers under his command came to him with an odd expression. He spoke by Su Yuan's ear, and Su Yuan's expression grew unsightly. He whispered, Can he still come? Eyes widening, Qi Yunruo asked, What's wrong? What happened to Dr. Wu? 
it was clear that Su Yuan was ill at ease. Displeased, he looked at Chi Yunruo and said, the horse was spooked and dashed off with the doctor on board. The old fellow fell off and fractured his leg, and hit his head all bloody. Chi Yunruo said in a low voice, is he still conscious? In an awkward manner, Su Ji looked at Chi Yunruo. To which Chi Yunruo replied, carry Dr. Wu into the estate. No matter what, he needs to check and see if he can still save the princess consort. Su Yuan feared actually risking the death of Princess Consort Chun. Anger filling his heart, he said, Why haven't you brought that old doctor in yet? Then he said to Chi Yunruo, Tell them to move aside. Chi Yunruo's gaze fell upon him. Things couldn't get any worse at this point. However, whatever the case, he must not allow anyone to enter the inner study. He shifted his gaze to Su Yuan's men. The other party had brought along 500 people. Right now, they were scattered all over the estate. Ever since their arrival, a dozen or more trusted aides followed by his side. At that moment, Chi Yunruo felt as though he had overlooked something. But try as he might, he couldn't figure out what it was. Su Yuan took one step after the other toward Chi Yunruo. The guards by Chi Yunruo's side drew their swords one by one. Said guards had gained experience from the battlefield. As such, they were completely unafraid of Su Yuan and his men. All of a sudden, Chi Yunruo called this into mind, when he had proposed sealing the main courtyard, Su Yuan had refused but when he had proposed sealing Winter Plum Courtyard and having all the womenfolk move inside, Su Yuan had agreed. Not to mention, what Li Zihoki had said previously. With all these things added up, in a stern voice, Chi Yunruo said, If you want to enter His Highness inner study, you can. But I have a condition. You have all seen that the study isn't that spacious. It cannot fit too many people. I'm concerned you people would pretend to catch a thief while being a thief, so everyone must take off their clothes. Only then can you go in and search. Panic flashed through Su Yuan's features. Afterward, he said, it's winter right now. The coldest time of the year. Yet you actually propose for my men to shed their clothes? Have you gone mad? Why are you still trying to stall for time? Chi Yunruo pointed to Su Yuan's trusted aides. Indifferently, he said, please take off your clothes to go in. Su Yuan gritted his teeth. This general has never heard of needing to remove one's clothes to perform a search. Bit by bit, Chi Yunruo calmed down. He reached out, indicating for the guards to surround Su Yuan's trusted aides. He sneered. Even if you report me and I have to enter the palace and meet the emperor, I'm not afraid. You dare, roared Su Yuan. Chi Yunruo took in a deep breath. Search all of these people. Marshal Hero Hall. As time slowly passed, unease finally crept onto Prince Yang's face. Why hasn't Su Yuan come yet? Could something have happened? Outside the main doors of Marshal Hero Hall rang a racket. Angered, the Emperor said, What's the matter? A court eunuch bowed and walked over. It is Her Majesty the Empress Dowager. It wasn't just the Emperor, everyone inside the Marshal Hall hero apart from Li Chen had their expression changed. As the Empress Dowager slowly entered the hall, the Emperor left his seat. With all the officials and princes in attendance, he saluted her. Once he stood back up, he personally supported Empress Dowager Lan to a seat. Just what has troubled Imperial Mother to come here? Empress Dowager Lan swept her gaze past those present in the hall one by one. As her gaze fell upon someone, he would drop his head in silence at that particular moment. Empress Dowager Lan took her time to say, Emperor. This grieving one has long since not involved myself with the court. This grieving one just does not understand why Chenner's brothers can't get along with him. They are blood-related brothers, so why do they wish for Chenner's death? The emperor said, the conclusion of this case has yet to be determined. Empress Dowager Lan smiled. Emperor, if Prince Chun truly conspired with the enemy, then what would you do? What would he do? 
No one here was as clear about Prince Chun's innocence as he but he hated the fact that this son of his excelled in both military affairs and politics. He allowed his other sons to work together and attack Prince Chun, even if he knew that his other sons were incapable of being the crown prince. The emperor was distracted, as if he hadn't thought of how he should handle Prince Chun should Su Yuan's search prove fruitful. Empress Dowager Lan said, if it turns out Prince Chun is innocent, what would emperor do? Among Su Yuan's trusted aides, one of them tried to take advantage of the confusion and sneak away. Qi Yun Ruo pointed at him and said, seize him. Su Yuan stood before him, shielding that trusted aide. What qualifications do you have to act on this general's people? Because I am the adjutant of Prince Chun's estate. Without his highness around, I am in charge. Seize him, whether he's dead or alive. Fang Gur found the chance to push that person to the ground. He pressed his sword on his body, reaching a hand into his clothes to search all over. A moment later, he laughed coldly. He found a stack of letters. Deputy General Su, what do you think this is? Su Yuan realized they had lost. He lifted his sword to slash down that trusted aide, ice cold as he said, You have followed this general for many years yet actually harbored evil intentions and want to harm Prince Chun. However, the captain of the guards, Chu Qing, stopped his strike with his own sword. That sword was held against Su Yuan's neck. Qi Yun Ruo took those letters and said in a flat manner, this official will make for the imperial palace at once, and request his majesty to determine whether Prince Chun is guilty or not. To which Su Yuan screamed, you can't. Chu Qing struck him to the ground with his hand. Tie him up as well. As the 500 soldiers watched as Su Yuan was captured, they knew that the situation had come to an end. Chi Yun Ruo said as he walked, I know that you people are just following orders. His Majesty will not blame you. If you all want to be washed clean of your crimes and also gain meritorious contributions, you can follow me to the Imperial Palace and explain what happened to the Emperor. Qi Yun Ruo mounted his horse and led them to the palace in haste. The emperor was left speechless by Empress Dowager Lan's words. A light sigh left her lips. You two are originally the closest father and son pair in this world. Why must things be taken to this point? The emperor muttered, Imperial Mother. Son. Suddenly, a court eunuch rushed into the hall. Your Majesties the Emperor and Empress Dowager the adjutant of Prince Chun's estate has arrived at the palace. He says he has something important to report to Your Majesty the Emperor. All at once, Li Chen rose to his feet. Little Chi. Little Chi has come? The Emperor furrowed his brows. Allow entry. Chi Yun Ruo entered Martial Hero Hall in a calm manner. His face appeared to have been blown by the cold wind, two ears red from the chill. However, he had a cool composure that could not be put into words. Behind him were Chu Qing and Fang Gur. Qi Yun Ruo did not specially search for Li Chen's silhouette. Rather, after he saluted, he took out those letters. This subject asks your majesty to look at these things. The emperor nodded. Huang Ling, his head eunuch, bowed and received the letters, before presenting them to the emperor. The emperor picked up the letters and gave them a few looks. Coldly he said, what's the meaning of this? As the adjutant of Prince Chun's estate, do you think he has communicated with our enemies? Your Majesty, these weren't found from Prince Chun's estate. Rather, this subject found them on one of Deputy General Su's subordinates. There are also human testimonies and material evidence here. In a flash, Marshal Hero Hall burst into uproar. Qi Yun Ruo seized an opportunity to glance at Li Chen. Li Chen flashed him a smile. Then Qi Yun Ruo continued, who actually was communicating and conspiring with our enemies, this subject cannot say. Your Majesty only needs to ask Deputy General Su's subordinates and your honored self should be clear on the situation. Prince Yang said, on what grounds did you search Su Yuan's men? Not one bit afraid, Qi Yun Ruo said straightforwardly because I know His Highness absolutely would not help Xinyuan country. Your Highness Prince Yang, 
your honored self has been to the northwest before. You, yourself should know that the fighting there gave Great Kong much trouble. Although Zen Yuan country did not send troops to fight us directly, they supported the Qiang greatly at the back. Prince Chun narrowly escaped death and accumulated a great amount of military contributions. He only holds hatred towards the king of Zen Yuan country. Prince Yang's complexion grew deathly pale. Moreover, cold sweat poured from his body. In such frigid weather, he felt like his body was soaked in sweat. The senior officials who had attacked Li Chen a moment ago felt the same. Prince Qing said, Imperial father, second imperial brother truly has complained about your honored self in his estate. Your Highness Prince Qing, this humble subject already has Li Zihoki tied up and thrown outside the palace hall. Your honored self can question him as much as you like, and even ask more details from him. Among all the officials in the room, Qi Yunruo, a fifth-rank official, was of the lowest rank. However, at this moment, no one dared to tell him to be quiet. Prince Jing knew that everything was over. He closed his eyes in disappointment. He only rejoiced that while the three of them had joined forces to attack his second imperial brother today, he was the only one of the three to not have brought out any evidence. He had merely taken advantage of the situation for his own benefit and said a few things. Empress Dowager Lan was also silent, yet her gaze when looking at Qi Yunruo proved very gentle. The dust had settled. Slowly, the emperor said, Yuan Rong. The Yuan Rong who had kept silent until now stepped forward. This subject is present. Draft an edict. On the 20th of January, 22nd year of the Yuanqing era, confer Prince Chun, Li Chen, as the crown prince. Qi Yunruo and Li Chen shared a look. Qi Yunruo smiled in a soft manner. Li Chen had his hand placed above his heart, giving Qi Yunruo his full attention. He did not seem happy in becoming the crown prince, his expression still calm as usual. When Qi Yunruo left the palace this time, he had never felt this calm before. He and Li Chen walked together side by side. Most of the senior officials that followed them out were anxious and too afraid to speak. Previously, there had been people who spoke for Prince Chun. However, the majority of officials present in the palace today had been part of the other three princes' factions. There were also some like great scholar Yuan, Yuan Rong, who were trusted aides of the emperor. Those people had kept quiet throughout the whole ordeal. After they had left the imperial palace, Li Chen held Qi Yunruo's hand. He looked at him. You came out of the estate with just these clothes, he reached out and caressed Qi Yunruo's face, then touched his ears. Qi Yunruo sighed. At that time, how could I have the free time to put on a cloak? The two no longer commented on the prior case that had brought them stress. Someone led Li Chen's horse by the reins over. Li Chen climbed onto the horse and Qi Yunruo sat behind him, holding his waist. When he thought about them going home like his, Qi Yunruo laughed. Isn't this just parading ourselves through the streets? Li Chen also laughed. Go. The people of Prince Chun's estate did not know that very soon, the plaque above the main doors would be changed. As they dismounted from the horse, Suji was waiting at the front of the estate doors with a sorrowful expression. Your Highness, Princess Consort wants to see you for the last time. Frightened, Qi Yunruo said, Dr. Wu couldn't save Her Highness. A sigh escaped Suji's lips. He was one step too late. Once Li Chen was before Winter Plum Courtyard, Qi Yunruo stopped in his tracks and said, Your Highness, I'll wait for you in Ink Lotus Courtyard. Li Chen nodded and entered by himself. Qi Nikan lay in bed looking at the ceiling. At her bedside were the other womenfolk of the estate, kneeling and sobbing in a bitter manner. However, Qi Nikan knew none of them were crying for her sake. They itched for her to die, itching to be the prince's main consort. Li Chen entered the bedroom and the sobs of those women grew louder. He waved and said, You're all dismissed. Qi Nikan did not turn her body, still lying straight. Her mind was clear. However, she knew that her life was slowly slipping away. Your Highness, 
you've come. Li Chen sat down. He looked at Qi Nikan with a calm gaze. Your Highness, in these past few months, I've often felt as though I hated you. But the memory I find hardest to forget is the day of our marriage. Not a word left Li Chen's lips as he continued to look at her silently as before. Your Highness, actually, I feel a little regretful. I just wanted to be a good princess consort for you but the heavens treated me unfairly, Chi Nikan grabbed one of Li Chen's hands and squeezed hard. Why was it only me who couldn't give birth to a son? Yet Consort Ji and Consort Wei could on their first tries. I'm not resigned, after she had finished speaking, her eyes still held unwillingness and resentment. She recalled her time as a maiden, recalled the first month of her marriage when the prince had treated her kindly. Li Chen slipped his hand out of her grip. He also thought back on his wedding day. However, try as he might, he could not remember how she had looked back then. He could only remember that as he was making for the forecourt, he caught sight of a young man by the watery corridor. Princess consort, said Li Chen. I will treat your daughters well and have them live happy lives. That's the most I can do. In your next life, don't reincarnate into a noble family. Be the daughter of a small household. Have a safe and smooth life with no worries. Chi Nikan closed her eyes. In the end, Chi Nikan had not been conferred the position of crown princess. She died on the day before Li Chen had been officially conferred the crown prince. Prince Chun's estate was overjoyed yet in grieving. The officials in the capital did not know whether they should congratulate Prince Chun for becoming the crown prince or grieve for the princess consort's death. The emperor's words were precious. He said he would send the imperial decree on the 20th of the month, and indeed that was so. As such, Prince Chun's estate did not decorate for a state of mourning, waiting for after Li Chen was officially conferred the position of crown prince before preparing for the funeral. Because the emperor did not confer Qi Nikan the position of crown princess, people said she would be buried with the rights of a princess consort of the first rank. Recently, Qi Yunruo felt mournful. He couldn't help but think if Su Yuan hadn't come to search the estate that day, if Dr. Wu had been on time, would Qi Nikan have lived? Would she have become the crown princess, then the empress of Great Kong? However, she had died when it was all said and done. And she died without glory. On the day of Qi Nikan's funeral procession, Prince Jing's estate, Princess Consort Qing, and Prince Yang's estate all sent funeral gifts but none of them showed their faces at the event. At present, they were all trembling in their boots. They did not have the courage to appear in front of Li Chen. Especially Prince Yang, Li Su. Back then, it indeed had been the men of his brother-in-law, Su Yuan, who prevented the retired imperial physician from examining Qi Nikan. Right now, Su Yuan was locked in prison. Prince Yang hated that he didn't find that old doctor in time. If Su Yuan had, then things might not have gotten that bad. Once Chi Nikan had been buried for a while, Li Chen would fall silent for a long period every day. Chi Yunruo only accompanied him in silence. The two sat together, their thoughts aligned. Chi Yunruo knew what Li Chen was thinking. They had finally come to this point on that difficult road, and Chi Nikan would always have a special place in Li Chen's heart. She had been Li Chen's wife, a woman whom he used to wish was a good woman. In the end, in a man's heart, a wife and a concubine were different. Even if Li Chen had never fallen in love with Qi Nikan at the end and had even hated her, Li Chen had never wanted her to die. Things were as simple as this. After Li Chen became the crown prince, the whole capital was shaken up. But Li Chen acted the same as he had during the last half year. He stayed in the crown prince estate and did not meet with anyone. The Merciful Celebration Palace was the designated residence of the Crown Prince in the Imperial Palace. However, no one had lived there for decades. The last person who had was Li Chen's paternal grandfather Ying Zong, during his time as Crown Prince. The Emperor did not mention having Li Chen move there. He still felt threatened by this son of his. All the things in Prince Chun's estate were no longer suitable for Li Chen. That said, 
Li Chen did not want to face too many changes at the moment. Apart from the plaque that hung above the main doors, nothing was changed in the estate. Your Highness Ah, uh, no, Your Highness the Crown Prince, said Qi Yunruo. Li Chen smiled. Come here. Qi Yunruo's circumstances changed with the overall trend. Although his official rank did not increase, he would be a trusted aide of the future emperor. No one dared to disrespect him. He rushed to Li Chen's side and said, Your Highness no. Crown Prince. After hesitating for a long time, he said, I forgot what I was going to say. Li Chen broke out into laughter. For a long while, Qi Yunruo furrowed his brows. Your Highness, I remember now. Count Ziang's estate sent a letter. It asked about how the matter with Minister Cheng was going. Li Chen did not remind him that he addressed him incorrectly in the end. In fact, for some reason, Li Chen liked when Qi Yunruo called him Your Highness more than Crown Prince. Because Prince Jing did not like Cheng Wenjia, the latter was implicated in that case earlier. In the end, Cheng Wenjia did not get punished but his son had truly taken a spy from Zenyuan country as a concubine. Moreover, that concubine discovered and transmitted much important information from the estate. Cheng Lingjun had been thrown into prison. He wasn't a romantic person by nature but studied too much and took on the bad habits of scholars. He had always liked gentle and beautiful women, beauties in red sleeves accompanying him as he read. After Qi Dangzia gave birth to two children, she was no longer as delicate and slender as before. Cheng Lingjun disliked that. One day, when he went out, he met a lovely and pitiful daughter from a good family. Suddenly, he fell in love with that woman and had to take her as a concubine. As a result, he got himself thrown in prison. Cheng Wenjia managed to save his position as Minister of Revenue but was unable to save his son. Presently, the Crown Prince estate had shut its gates and did not allow visitors. He had no way of coming to the Crown Prince estate and as such, asked his daughter-in-law to ask Count Ziang's estate, and have them plead for help from the Crown Prince. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 69 Crown Prince After a moment of silence, Li Chen said, Speaking of which, it's because Cheng Wenjia and I have a good relationship that other people want to go through him to harm me. Cheng Lingjun's crime isn't worthy of death, so when the Cheng family comes tomorrow, go and meet with them. Qi Yunruo nodded. After a moment, he thought of something and said with difficulty, These days, second young miss has been feeling tired. Several imperial physicians have examined her but said she was fine. Such a young child shouldn't be eating medicine. What does your honored self think we should do? The second young miss was over two years old. Although she wasn't close with her mother, she saw her mother on the days of her sickbed, when the young girl was supposed to serve her. After that, they couldn't hide the funeral arrangements in the Crown Prince estate from her anymore. Whether it was because she was too exhausted or heartbroken, such a small child couldn't bear it any longer. Li Chen stood. I'll go have a look at her. Second young Miss Chuer was originally a lively and adorable girl. But recently, she had a sickly complexion and didn't want to go outside. The weather was great these days, and the flowers of Drawing Brow's courtyard were in magnificent bloom. Her younger sister had just learned how to walk and pleaded for the older female servants to take her outside and pluck the flowers. Yet, Chuer would rather stay inside. Chi Nikan had good looks, so her daughter was also beautiful but after a few months, Chuer had grown one size thinner. Chi Yunruo looked all around and felt that although the residence was large enough, and there were enough servants, she was without the accompaniment of her parents. Second young Miss Identity was noble. Other people did not know how to relieve her of her heavy emotions. As such, she had come to this state. Lying in bed, Chuer said in tears, Father. Li Chen smiled. He reached out to wipe the tears from his daughter's face. Why don't you accompany your younger sister to play? Choking with sobs, Chuer said, Father. I. I don't want to go outside. 
Li Chen's heart pulsed with pain. However, he did not show it on his face. He reached out and pulled his second daughter into his arms. He cradled her and rocked her lightly. Can you hear? Your younger sister is laughing so happily. Chu Er said, Father, is mother, never going to see Chu Er again. A light sigh left Li Chen's lips. Yes. She sobbed lightly, little body pressed against Li Chen's bosom, trembling. Li Chen patted her back. In a soft voice, he said, but father is still here. Father can accompany you, he glanced at Qi Yunruo, and Qi Yunruo said, I'll go and tell Yan Er's servant girls to prepare so that she can sleep with Chu Er and Ying Er tonight. Li Chen nodded. However, Qi Yunruo discovered that when Chu Er turned her head to look at him, her gaze was highly on guard. The next day, Qi Yunruo went to Lakeside View House to wait for the Cheng family. A while later, a eunuch arrived with a report, the Cheng family's young mistress had arrived. It's Qi Dangxia, Qi Yunruo felt somewhat surprised but a moment later, realization struck him. Cheng Lingjun was Cheng Wenjia's only son. In this kind of situation, Cheng Wenjia should not personally come. Despite this, Sending a steward would be too disrespectful for the crown prince estate. The most suitable method was to use the excuse of their daughter-in-law meeting with her elder brother. It had been a long time since Qi Yunruo had last seen Qi Dangxia. Back then, she had just gotten married and her face was still full of the rossiness of pride. Not to mention, she had worn fine attire. She had always had a graceful figure and charming eyes. When Qi Dangxia had accidentally exposed her nails from her sleeves, they had been painted dark red. Now that Qi Dangxia was here again, her face already seemed anxious and mournful, despite belonging to a 19-year-old young woman. Qi Yunruo noticed that she was holding a wooden box. She did not take good care of her hands, they no longer appeared as delicate as they had in the past. She entered the room with her head lowered. She curtsied. Greetings to elder brother. Qi Yunruo was caught in a daze. Then he said, stand and come sit. Yes. He had the servants serve tea. Qi Dangxia's expression was too unnatural. Yet, Qi Yunruo only pretended not to have seen it. After the maid servants presented the tea and left, Qi Dangxia stood again. In a flash, she knelt before Qi Yunruo. She held the wooden box up with both hands, voice trembling as she said, These, these are the things left behind from elder brother's mother. This concubine had been unaware of it. Qi Yunruo said, Was it the mistress who told you? Qi Dangxia looked at him with panicking gaze. A light sigh left his lips. He opened the box. Inside were a few pieces of jewelry and jade artifacts. Qi Yunruo pretty much understood why Countess Ziang had informed Qi Dangxia of these things. She probably wanted him to take his anger out on her, right? Qi Yunruo closed the box and smiled. Stand. I didn't send you any gifts for your marriage. Let's treat these few things as my additions to your dowry. Now sit down. Tell me about the matters regarding that spy from Zenyuan country. Naturally. Qi Dangxia was shocked. She had treated Qi Yunruo poorly in the past and had never regarded him as her elder brother while in the Count estate. She had been a pampered daughter of Count Ziang. Later on, she married a legitimate son of a second-rank official, her life going smoothly. Because of her mother, Qi Dangxia took out her anger on Qi Yunruo, hated Qi Yunruo. Felt good if Qi Yunruo had it bad, but after Cheng Lingjun fell into trouble, she couldn't rely on her paternal family. Her father-in-law told her to beg someone she viewed as her enemy, and her legitimate mother Countess Ziang sent her a letter saying Qi Yunruo was someone who held grudges. Even when Qi Nikan had still been the princess consort, he dared to request for his mother's things back. What more of her who didn't have a noble rank and whose husband was in prison? Qi Yunruo said indifferently, Don't think I'm an impartial person. I'm not someone who can forgive everything but you and I can't be considered enemies. You had only been 14 when I left Count Ziang's estate. 
how could a 14-year-old little girl hold deep grudges against anyone? Trembling, Chi Dangzia nodded. Chi Yunruo returned the items to her. When did that woman first encounter Cheng Lin Jun? When did Cheng Ling Jun take her as a concubine? It's already been half a year but I didn't like her. I'm not afraid of you laughing at me, elder brother but I always watched for her mistakes in the estate, yet couldn't find any. Not just anyone could enter father-in-law study. If it weren't for the fact that people from the Ministry of Justice came to find her, I wouldn't have known she was a spy. Chi Yunruo nodded. Just what went missing in the minister's estate? Nothing. But elder brother, whenever the Ministry of Revenue was missing money, she would know all the details and she even said she had overheard it from when father-in-law and husband were talking. Then the Ministry of Justice captured husband. There are definitely people in the Ministry of Revenue transmitting information to her, he said. As long as we can prove she didn't hear it from Cheng Ling Jun, then he won't be kept in prison anymore. I heard that this woman is tight-lipped and won't say anything. Chi Yunruo thought for a moment and said, since she's a child from a good family, that means she isn't alone. Or could she not have any close relatives? Her family have all fled. Furrowing his brows, Chi Yunruo said, they already left the capital. Chi Dangzia shook her head. Most likely not. Martial law has long since been applied to the capital. However, nothing of suspect could be found from the families that were close to her family. Indeed. As a spy, they cannot allow other families to be implicated. The Ministry of Revenue, a concubine of the Cheng family. Prince Yang. Chi Yunruo muttered, even if you kill Su Yuan, he won't confess that it was Prince Yang who incited his actions. I think Prince Yang has records of these spies. Chi Dangzia fell silent. This was the reason her father-in-law could not speak out. A Prince Jing. A Prince Yang. As long as their noble titles remained, as long as the emperor did not not dismiss them from office, the Ministry of Justice could not investigate them. Thus, Cheng Ling Jun got caught up in this mess. I understand. This situation started in the hands of those two princes. In those months Prince Jing oversaw the Ministry of Revenue, he hid from Minister Cheng the great amount of money he embezzled. What did Prince Jing do with this money? Then Qi Yunruo recalled that Prince Jing had been busy with disaster relief for half a year, and the funds for it kept fluctuating. There were many opportunities to defraud. Following that, Prince Jing and Prince Yang became allies. Qi Yunruo said, for this matter, we probably have to investigate Jiangnan. Investigate the Shi family. In a frenetic manner, Qi Dangzia said, then what's to be done? Don't tell me we have to let my husband stay in prison? Elder brother. The Ministry of Justice's prison flouts the law. My husband is only a scholar. He basically cannot endure the environment. Qi Yunruo looked at her. He couldn't help his thoughts from wandering in this direction, she was this worried about her husband, yet Cheng Ling Jun took on a concubine from a good family without giving her any face. This all happened because of his lust. And now, Qi Dangzia had to clean up after his mess. I think that woman has already been confirmed as a spy, said Qi Yunruo. Her words should not be completely trusted. Apart from this, there's no evidence pointing to Cheng Ling Jun's crime. I'll go ask the PRI the Crown Prince. See if he can tell the Ministry of Justice to release Cheng Ling Jun as soon as possible. Qi Dangzia dropped to a kneel. Deeply moved, she said, this concubine thanks elder brother and his highness the Crown Prince. Mm, Qi Yunruo smiled. Hurry and stand. If Cheng Ling Jun can be released, remember to tell him this live his life smoothly and easily from now on. To which Qi Dangzia nodded tearfully. Qi Yunruo had people send his sister out. After he had watched her leave, he returned to Ink Lotus Courtyard and told Li Chen what he and Qi Dangzia had discussed. Li Chen nodded and said, Indeed, he can be released. I've met Cheng Ling Jun in the past. He doesn't have the courage to conspire with our enemies. 
he merely has the typical preferences of a scholar. He likes delicate women yet looks down on them. He finds women useless. Following that, Li Chen wrote a short note for Qi Yunruo. He should remember this lesson for the rest of his life. Qi Yunruo smiled. PRI Crown Prince, Mr. Uyang is still in Jiangnan right now. Should we tell him to investigate where Prince Jing hid the money he stole? Li Chen's expression darkened. He closed his eyes in thought. Prince Jing has many arrangements inside and outside the capital. It's not just Jiangnan. He has people in other places. Then what should we do? With an air of indifference, Li Chen said, Currently, I'm not lacking in time. Let's do this slowly and investigate one place after the other. Before Chi Nikan fell ill, she had relaxed her control over the inner courtyard. As such, Chi Yunruo had no choice but to manage the inner courtyard until now. After Chi Nikan passed away, he hesitated on whether he should mention adding people to help him manage the inner courtyard. He also slightly worried over whether the emperor would choose a new crown princess for the crown prince estate. After Li Chen heard his words, he found it funny. Even if the emperor wants to bestow me a marriage, he has to wait one year until my mourning period is over, he saw that Qi Yunruo's expression looked poor and understood what he was worrying about. He pulled him into his arms. Don't worry. I won't remarry. Qi Yunruo said in a muffled voice, but if the emperor insists on you marrying a principal consort, what's to be done? Li Chen fell silent for a moment. Then he leaned over and said a few words into his ear. Really? Qi Yunruo's eyes widened. Li Chen said, M.M. Basically, Li Chen's expression seemed normal. However, the more Qi Yunruo thought of it, the heavier his concerns grew. Li Chen looked at him and reached out to pinch his face. Out of reflex, Qi Yunruo swatted his hand away. Once he realized what he had done, he fell into a daze. Then he carefully raised his head to peek at Li Chen's reaction but Qi Yunruo's action only amused Li Chen. He once again reached out, and pretended to be angry. You truly are courageous, actually daring to act on the crown prince. Qi Yunruo said, why aren't you worried? Things have already reached this point. That's why I'm not worrying anymore. Silently, Qi Yunruo sat at the side. The word father made him feel very complicated. From his childhood, when he had looked forward to seeing him and revered him, to his time as a young man, when his hopes had shattered, Qi Yunruo considered Count Ziang, Qi Suxiao, as a stranger. Later on, when his mother's and his grudges unfolded, Qi Yunruo grew to hate him. Now, he no longer wanted to waste energy on other people. And as before, he regarded Count Ziang as a stranger. But what about the prince? Perhaps there truly was not much affection in the imperial clan. The emperor had so many sons. In the current year and the next year, there would be many princes reaching 15 years old, able to leave the palace, be conferred the position of first-ranked prince, and establish their own estate. His youngest son was two years old, and he also had countless daughters. Li Chen slowly said, when I was born, the relationship between imperial father and grandmother was starting to sour. Although grandmother returned the power back into imperial father's hands, he kept feeling afraid and suspicious of her. At the Palace of Merciful Peace, I did not have more opportunities to meet imperial father than other people. Moreover, imperial mother and grandmother were already in a state of mutual hostility. So much so that Imperial Mother would rather feign illness than to pay respects to Grandmother. Leaning against Li Chen, Qi Yunruo held him silently. When I returned to Imperial Mother's side, she treated me kindly on the surface but secretly told my fourth brother to best me at everything. Imperial Father felt concerned that Grandmother would use me to seize the Imperial authority. So, when I first worked in the Ministry of Revenue, I had no power. Qi Yunruo said, Actually, I think Empress Dowager Lan never wanted power in the first place. Yes. Grandmother doesn't care about these things. In the past, I often heard her say that when she was younger, 
she would often be busy scheming against the court officials, neglecting Imperial Father. It made Imperial Father think she had grown addicted to court struggles. At that time, my maternal grandfather, Imperial Preceptor Joe, had been instructing Imperial Father. He told him that Grandmother was monopolizing the Imperial authority. Moreover, that he should ask Grandmother to let him personally handle government affairs ahead of time. Then, he said this day after day to Imperial Father. Imperial Father started to harbor a grudge against her as a result. With complicated emotions, Chi Yunruo said, Perhaps now, His Majesty understands. Smiling, Li Chen shook his head, not a word escaped him. In the end, Chi Yunruo did not ask which concubine should be given the authority to manage the inner courtyard. Rather, he would continue to supervise it himself. One day, as he was walking, a thought suddenly came to mind, once the prince ascended the throne, what position would he have? No matter how one put it, the prince estate was a personal residence, the prince's territory. He could divide the estate into an inner courtyard and a forecourt, let his wife and concubines live in the inner courtyard, and invite his aides and advisors to stay in the forecourt. Li Chen could continue to raise Qi Yunruo's status if he wanted to. Even if he wasn't an adjutant, he naturally could go anywhere in the prince estate. However, if the prince becomes the emperor, the imperial palace could not equate to his personal residence. Every corner of the palace was under the careful watch of other people. The emperor had the least privacy in the world. A few years ago, when Qi Yunruo had first entered Prince Chun's estate, he was only a 15-year-old boy. He had been petite and could still fall under the category of a catamite. Now, he was almost all grown, though he wasn't as tall as the prince. He looked like a youth with a lofty temperament and was currently a fifth-rank official. Not only that, his position was hardly low. This was the first time Chi Yunruo had thought of this problem but in a flash, he had cast it aside. He had always hoped that the prince could ascend the throne, felt that he had the ability to become the emperor and he wholeheartedly offered his meager wisdom and abilities to him. But after that? What would happen to him in the future? Chi Yunruo was flustered. He thought of Ji Huan, thought of Rong Sun Yang. Brother Ji had long since understood this. Since the beginning, he knew he had to leave and never thought of remaining. Rong Sun Yang had told him that once the prince became the crown prince, he should leave him. But after he left, where could he go? It was because Chi Yunruo had met the prince that he was where he was now. He had become Chi Yutse, become the fearless adjutant Chi who had faced 500 soldiers. Back then, if he had not come to Prince Chun's estate as a dowry escort, he would have withered away to death in that deep, deep inner courtyard. Chi Suxiao would give him one bowl of rice, would have him marry a daughter of a normal family, and then, he would live out the rest of his life in such a dull manner. Chi Yunruo realized the chasm standing between him and the prince. Would he become a sycophantic official? On the road back, Chi Yunruo kept wondering if his name would go down in those history books detailing sycophantic and trusted officials. Would he resemble Dong Xiang and Mitsi Xia? What if he resigned from office in the future? Chi Yunruo was full of bitterness. In the future, after the prince became the emperor, he would have an empress who would be in charge of teaching his children, in charge of being the mother of the world. During holidays and celebrations, she would be by the prince's side and be worshipped by everyone. Sir Chi, why are you still here? His Highness has been looking for you for a while. Chi Yunruo raised his head and noticed it was Lulan. Then he nodded and rose to his feet from the decorative plots of flowers and shrubs. He patted the dust off his clothes and followed her to Ink Lotus Courtyard. Sir, why did it take you so long to return from the inner courtyard? In an absent-minded manner, he replied, I thought of some things and lost track of time. When he returned to Ink Lotus Courtyard, he realized that the days had grown longer, and it was almost time to arrange the noon meal. It was unknown how long the prince had waited for him. Chi Yunruo forced a smile. After he washed his hands, he sat next to Li Chen. Li Chen said, 
were you busy today? No. The scenery at the garden seemed wonderful, so I sat down for a while to admire it. Then I forgot the time. Li Chen did not pry, only picking some food to place into Qi Yunruo's bowl. This tomato sauce tofu is delicious. Have a taste. Ai, thank you, your highness, Qi Yunruo ate it. Li Chen noticed that he still addressed him incorrectly, and smiled as he shook his head. Qi Yunruo was able to conceal his upset emotions well. It took Li Chen several days before he noticed Qi Yunruo had a load on his mind. Because he did not show the slightest bit of it on his face and merely went lost in thought from time to time, thoughts that were unknown to Li Chen, Li Chen did not realize this at the start. Not only that, once he did realize it, Li Chen did not grow worried and ask Qi Yunruo the reasons for his heavy thoughts. Since little Qi didn't want to talk about it, he had to have his reason. Perhaps not long after, little Qi would be willing to talk about it. However, on the day Li Chen had received bad news from the palace, he still didn't know what Qi Yunruo was worried about. Summer was approaching. On that day, Qi Yunruo could not sleep well. Rather, his back faced Li Chen as he pondered over his worries, when they suddenly heard urgent footsteps outside the room. Following that, knocks sounded on the door, it was echoing. Li Chen's expression darkened. He rose and changed his clothes. Your Highness, could it be, Qi Yunruo was pale. Li Chen said, just concentrate on securing the estate. Tell the servants not to run their mouths. Calmly, Qi Yunruo nodded. Li Chen breathed in deeply and hugged Qi Yunruo. In an instant, tears started to flow from Qi Yunruo's eyes. Li Chen smiled and asked, What's wrong? Qi Yunruo shook his head and said, Your Highness, I will wait for you here. Mm. Once Li Chen left for the Imperial Palace with some people, Qi Yunruo sat in the night alone for a good while, before rising to a stand. He didn't continue sleeping. He waited silently until dawn. The atmosphere in the prince estate was much more urgent than that of the past, the servants were even more cautious while walking. At this time of the year, the sun rose very early in the morning. The hourglass only showed that it was the fifth watch of the night. Suji entered the room and said, The capital has already imposed martial law. Chi Yunruo nodded. He left the room, voice soft as he said, The monastery will toll its bell thirty thousand times. Just when would it finish ringing? End chapter